Welcome to Bet On It College Football Week Number Six. I am Kelly Stewart. Let's bring in two of my favorite guys over at Wager Talk. That's right, Marco D'Angelo and Yanni Corrales. Gentlemen, I just want to do two things before we do our recap. Shout out to VR for some of that gold from the UFC on Monday. You've been crushing the Dana White Contender Series. And shout out to Marco for finally telling me how old he's going to be while we're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> before the show started, I cannot wait to celebrate. We are going to talk Penn State, Iowa. But first, I wanted to address something in the comments from last week. Bring back up the recap. This is just our college football and NFL records. I had misspoke when I said it didn't include the big game breakdowns or Survivor. So, no, we are not picking Survivor winners as uh, our actual overall winners. And as you can see, I went from 6-1 and one to 6-3 and three this week. That is because both of my best bets were losers. So we're going to change that up this week. Best bets come in for you at the end of the show. But, Marco, really quickly, let's get into this game. Penn State at Iowa. Penn State, a two-point underdog here. Iowa looked really good on Friday night. Really, really good. Because why? Tua's little brother threw five interceptions. I'm afraid they looked a little too good. I kind of lean towards the dog here, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. Well, obviously, Kelly, we're going to be looking at, on paper, we got the number three and number four ranked team in the country. They're also ranked three and four defensively in college football. So uh, if you're looking for a lot of scoring, this is should not be the game to tune into. But if you want some good old-fashioned smash-mouth football, this is it. And I'll tell you what, I think it's going to come down to the quarterback play in this game. And I just like quarterback Sean uh Clifford better in this game for Penn State he's had a couple big game uh already experience wise as far as goes this year they opened the season on the road at Wisconsin and yes I know Wisconsin now doesn't look as good as everybody thought they were gonna be but it was still you go into Wisconsin and play it is tough to win on the road and they were doing it with a new offensive coordinator. Now they've had a few games under their belt, learning the system and feeling comfortable. They also had a big game against Auburn. Uh, that was the whiteout game at Penn State. So they've had some big games. I think they're the team to beat here. Iowa's looked absolutely impressive, but I really got to question who Iowa's beaten. Their signature win was Iowa State. And we've seen Iowa State already lose a couple times this year. The only teams they can beat our teams, when they're a 30-point favorite, I'm not sold on that. And you look at Maryland, that was their other signature win. How good is Maryland from the uh, Big Ten here? Uh, I just don't think they're a team to look at right now as far as strength goes. Yeah, it was impressive, and it was on TV. And that's why Iowa's favorite, to be honest with you. My numbers say Penn State should be the favorite, and that's where I'm siding, Penn State. Marco and I in lockstep early on in the show. VR, can we make it three in a row? Yeah, 100%. And I haven't bet this game. And unfortunately, I missed that plus three that Iowa was offering Penn State. And that's the problem I'm having right now, being a value better. Can I get to the window knowing I could have got plus three earlier in the week, knowing how key of a number plus three is? And to me, that's the struggle. Like, even if Penn State goes out there and wins the game and covers, in my mind, I'm going to be thinking, should I have really placed, like, was there a better ROI spot for me to trade these dollars than that? Um, because, again, I'm looking at two teams that I think are a little bit overrated. Uh, and we're at that time of the college football season and in the NFL where the data has to start mattering, meaning – Again, there's not statistical significance because the sample size isn't big. We don't have 162 games. We have a 10-11 game season in college football. We have a 17 game season in NFL. So a couple games in, you have to start drawing some conclusions with the data. With all that said, you are uh, making some guesses. At, and because of that, you have to manage your risk accordingly. Um, and I think that's what Casual bettors just don't do as well as professional bettors. Um, and this is one of those games that sticks out where I think a lot of the value on the Penn State side may be gone. Um, because when you look at the numbers, they're just the better team. Marco nailed it. It's the quarterback play because you got two great defenses. Um, here's the metrics. 
4.3 yards per play defensively for Penn State allows, 4.1 for Iowa. Doesn't get better than that, but it's on the offensive side that Penn State has the huge advantage, 6.2 to 4.8. And it's at the quarterback position where 162 QBR rating. Um, so big edges on that side for Penn State. That's the side I like. But again, we're looking at some overvalued teams because I do not think they are the number three and number four uh, best teams in the country. Um, but when you look at rankings, it's based mostly on records. And perfect example is I just looked before we went on at the AP and whatever that's called, the top 20, and I see BYU 10, Coastal Carolina 15. Are you kidding me? I would make three and two Miami, I mean, Florida, excuse me, favor over both of those teams. And yet they're much higher on the rankings. It shows you just how useless they are. And it's based on nothing more than records. If you're undefeated, you're a top 20 team. It don't matter who you beat. Um, so again, I, I'm looking at two overvalued teams. I think the Penn State side was the right side at plus three. On the show, got to give a side. I still like Penn State. The metrics reflect that's where the value is. They've won six of the last seven in this series. They got blown out by 20 last year. There's revenge there as well. So it all adds up to Penn State. So I'm not surprised Sharps bet it. I love to hear it. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the window as well. As VR mentioned, there was a three. Kind of hate being late to the party, but uh, yep. we'll see if Penn State does not make my card to end the week. Now, normally this is where I'd bring in our favorite guy, Ralph Michaels, for some much-needed TNA. But unfortunately, Ralph is taking today off. I don't know how I feel about that, Ralph. It is football season. None of us get to go on vacation unless, well, that's actually not fair. That being said, we're going to take a quick, quick commercial break. When we come back, we got some barking dogs. we got a steam game. Is the deli back open? Or maybe one of those Venus fly traps is coming for you from Marco. Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2. Have you checked out all the new handicappers at Wager Talk? If not, here's your chance. You can take 50% off your first daily or three day all access purchase at Wager Talk using coupon code TRYWT. Our new roster of experts is 30 deep, covering sports from all around the world, giving you tons of options to choose from. All you have to do to redeem this offer is go to wagertalk.com, choose a handicapper of your choice, and use coupon code TRYWT at checkout, saving 50% on your first purchase. Welcome back to Bet On It. It's now time to see who these guys found this week with those barking dogs. That's right. We're looking for dogs that have a shot to win outright. And there's a bunch of chihuahuas on my list this week. So maybe, just maybe, Marco found me a nice, sizable one. Well, Kelly, you know, I, I guess size matters. You want a big one here uh, for the barking dog. But I want to clarify something here quick. Uh, the last segment with Ralph not being here. Ralph's not on vacation. I told Ralph, we need to spice up TNA, and he's taking pole dancing lessons right now, so he'll be back next week uh, spiced up with the TNA. On to barking dogs. Uh, Kelly, I've got one. This one is a plus five. I don't know if that's meaty enough for you. I know you've been crushing uh, these uh, dogs with the, your uh, three-team parlays that you're sending out on Twitter. Congrats on that to you. But I'm going to look at Boise State against BYU. And, yeah, BYU is undefeated in their role. And I'll tell you what, this is a great spot when you talk about uh, finding a team, a live dog. I really could have used this in our other segment uh, for a sandwich game as well. You take a look at BYU. Last week they played on Friday night, standalone game. Well, there was two games of interest that night. But all eyes on them in that time slot. And they took care of business against their in-state rival, Utah State. Now, granted, it was a bigger rivalry game for Utah State than BYU. But still, with BYU being an independent, uh, when they play Utah and Utah State, those are huge games. So why are they not going to be up for Boise State? Boise State's been a big name in the Mountain West Conference for years. Well, a little luster's fallen off that. The Smurf turf at Boise State's not been getting it done like it used to. and 
the fact that BYU smacked the snot out of them last year. If you look at last year's score, they beat them 51-17. to uh, This is going to be a game that uh, Boise State has had circled for some time for the revenge, being embarrassed on their home field that way. Also, if you look, and you want to go back and look at that game, uh, Boise State had uh, injury issues. They had to start their third-string quarterback in that game, and by the time they got to the fourth quarter, they were down to the fifth-string quarterback uh, playing in that game. So definitely you're going to see a fired-up Boise State that got embarrassed. But who does BYU play next week? That completes the look ahead. They've got Baylor on the schedule. That's a Power 5 conference team. You know BYU is going to be looking uh, forward to that game. One, because, yeah, they're undefeated, so they got to take care of business here. But the signature wins they need to try to, you know, rise up in the polls and try to sneak into the playoffs is they've got to run the table and they got to beat that Power 5 school. And that would be Baylor on the horizon next week. And just a little side note, I think BYU wants to make an audition statement uh, to the Big 12. The Big 12 is going to be losing some teams coming up. This is a spot for BYU. Wouldn't they be a fit in the Big 12? I say they're looking ahead. We catch them. Take the live dog. Boise State gets it done on Saturday. I'm calling 30-27. to 27. Boise State pulls the upset. Go ahead. I'll do the VR. Little sprinkle. I love it. This one is on my long list as well, Marco. I think I'm going to have to get to the window now. Just like Stanford last week, you called for the outright winner. I did bet against this Boise State team. But I have to agree with what VR said, and that is, who is BYU to be in the top 10 of these rankings? Not in my power ratings. VR, who is your barking dog for college football week six? I'm going to fade a 4-1 and one team that's as phony as that $3 bill we all love, and, and that's Baylor. I'm going to take the three points with West Virginia in a very winnable game. In fact, I think the wrong team's favored, even though this is in Baylor and it's been a, a home series. And here's why. Baylor showed just how phony they are last week. They should have been exploited earlier in that week one contest against Texas State when they didn't cover, you knew something was amiss. And then big deal, they go out, they blow out Texas Southern, they blow out uh, a lot of Kansas team with, when they're 40 points and 17 point favorites. But it was that Iowa State game that was the most misleading. And that's why to me, I care more about the metrics and the box score than what my eyes tell me. Because when you look at that score, you see 31-29 Baylor. And if you watch that game or what have you, or just looked at that score, it looks okay. They won the game. They did nothing but get lucky. That was a random win at best. But let's look at the sandwich spot for Kentucky. Yeah, it's LSU. So you're going to say, they're not going to be flat, you know, looking at LSU. Well, this year, LSU is not the, you know, second biggest name in the SEC. How many years? It's usually Alabama, LSU, or Alabama, Georgia, or Alabama, Florida. Well, they just played the Florida end of the sandwich. Who's the other side of that sandwich? They got Georgia next week. <laughs> you can't get a bigger sandwich spot in the world than you've got right here with Kentucky sandwiched in between Florida and Georgia and coming off an emotional win where – uh, I expect them, you know, to not have the same intensity they had last week. And this is a team that struggles if they can't run the football. Uh, they don't have a great passing game. Their thing is to run the football. And I don't see them having great success against this LSU defense. I'm going to take LSU. I'm going to take those points uh, with them. And we're going to call for another outright upset uh, in the LSU quarterback, Max Johnson has thrown in the last three games, 400, 280, and 325. I just don't see Kentucky staying with them in this one. Uh, I think this game should be closer to a pick em, But because of the big win last week in LSU's loss, we've got Kentucky laying a field goal. I'll take it, but I'm going to call it LSU 27-20. So you can go ahead and put some sprinkle out there as well. Marco, that was another one of those small dogs. Man, I swear we are just seeing eye to eye this week. VR, that train's rolling down the tracks, and that is the money train. I'm going to have them redo a graphic here because the steam game of the week has been crushing. Let's hear who you have for this week. 
and I really got to pick it up in college football. I hope the the watchers or, or viewers, our family out there has really paid attention to this team off the football field. Because I, I, I look real quick right now, and Micro Strategies is trading at $670. I think I gave that out at below $600 just uh, well, two weeks ago. So you want to jump on those when they pop out real quick. That's what Steam is. And uh, Bitcoin, what now? 10, 15% from its all-time high, just around the corner. Not too late. We'll be at 100K real quick. Uh, but let's get the back to the football field. And I'm going to have to just jump on another misleading record. That's what we take advantage of around this time of the season. And you have a San Jose T State team. That's the phony three and two compared to a much better Colorado State team. That's a one and three. And in fact, Colorado State team uh, should be a much greater favorite than they are right now. Um, you're seeing the line move in that direction. Obviously, it's all sharp money, wise guy money, call it steam. We bet it at uh, minus one and a half and two. We bet it on the money line. Uh, that's why I personally think right now, uh, if if it gets to three, you know, you want if you agree with me, you want to get there before it gets to three. Otherwise, when it's below that, you want to look at that money line price. And, and bottom line is this: it's strength of schedule early on. You could play who's in front of you. And unfortunately for Colorado State, they had the much tougher opposition. They were at Iowa, where they were 24 point dogs. They were at Toledo, where they were two touchdown dogs. On the flip side. You have a San Jose State team that was just 26 point favorites against a New Mexico State and couldn't cover. More importantly, when you look at the metrics, they're not all that off between the teams. That's what's most impressive to me. Sure, Colorado State's offense yard per play, a little less than San Jose's. When you look at the defense, though, that's the side of the ball that matters most, stopping the opposition from scoring. Um, and for me, if you look at the metrics, you have 5.1 yards per play allowed for San Jose State, the 5.2 for Colorado State. Compared to the strength of schedule, it should be much higher for Colorado State, much lower for San Jose State. Shows how weak that defense truly is. That's going to be the difference maker. That's why I'm bringing that up. Watch Colorado State put up points against this team. They haven't been able to break, what, 23 points all season? They're going to do that this week because of that phony defense of San Jose State. Hey, Colorado State, just don't lay more than three. That's the steam play this week. Good stuff from Marco and VR. We are going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, it's time to figure out who everyone has as their best bet for this week. Why pay regular price when you can save money on every purchase with wager bucks at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo? Wager bucks are now eligible for use on not just daily, three-day and seven-day passes, but all long-term and seasonal packages up to one full year. There are tons of options available for every budget and size of better, from as low as 90 gets $100, all the way up to 3,500 gets you 5,000. Save every day on every pick you buy with wager bucks. Each and every Monday is $9 Monday at wagertalk.com. All daily picks packages are priced at only $9, including $40 5% best bets. As an added bonus, all new users will receive $25 in wager bucks credited to their accounts available for immediate use after their initial $9 Monday purchase. So make sure to take advantage of $9 Mondays at wagertalk.com. Welcome back to Bet On It. I am Kelly Stewart, and it is time for my best bet. Why? Because the guys are always kind enough to let me go first. I've got some making up to do after losing. The only game I lost last week was my best bet, Western Kentucky. What did I do? What was I thinking betting against Sparty? And I'm probably going to do it again this week with Rutgers, but Rutgers will not be my best bet. My best bet is actually going to be Illinois. And I say that with a long pause because I cannot believe I just uttered those words. I am like physically ill thinking about it. But what makes me more physically ill is thinking about laying double digits with a team who is absolutely allergic to the red zone. And that is the Wisconsin Badgers. Yes. This defense has kept them in a couple of games, but man, oh man, now you have Mertz, who is questionable. It sounds like, based on the press clippings, he should be a go. He said he's feeling good. I don't think it matters here. This is a Wisconsin team that just got the break speed off of them by their rival in Michigan. This is just tough. This is like a tough spot. Now they just have to go to Champaign, and all they have to do 
is beat a Big Ten bottom feeder. I'm not buying it, you guys. I think 10 points is far too many. Marco, your week six, best bet. All right, Kelly, I'm going with another underdog. It's a slight underdog, but we're going to take Virginia Tech. And Kelly, I've been doing this, you know, forever. <laughs> and uh, there's an angle that I like to use in college football, and I call it the dream crusher game. And simply put, what that is, is I fade a team the game after they lose that ends their season goals. And for me, that was Notre Dame last week. That loss last week for Notre Dame against Cincinnati took them out of the hunt for the national championship. Now, I know a lot of people are going to sit there and say, hey, a one-loss Notre Dame team can still get in. No, they can't because they don't play anybody else on the schedule strong enough to get them back in there. Plus, they're going to always have Cincinnati in front of them. You can't leapfrog them over Cincinnati if it comes down to the end when you're looking for that fourth team to get in there. And then, of course, we know what Notre Dame has done whenever they have made it into the final four for the national championship playoffs. So for me, last week really screwed them as far as getting into the playoffs. With that said, now they got to travel on the road to play a Virginia Tech team that's had two weeks to prepare for them. Uh, this is a spot for them that they've got an offensive-minded coach and Justin Fuentes, with two weeks to prepare and getting a Notre Dame team that might be flat after last week's loss, yeah, I'm all over that. It's a night game at Virginia Tech as well. I love these college games when they get a big-name school coming into their building at night for them to rock and roll. They've been out in a parking lot tailgating all day. That crowd will be at a different level. I'm going to go ahead and take Virginia Tech. It's always a big deal when. Notre Dame comes to your building. I like Virginia Tech. I've got them winning this game 26 to 20. Take Virginia Tech is my best bet this week. Already on it, Marco. I saw that video you gave out on the Wager Talk Twitter earlier this week. So I already locked and loaded lines down to pick them. Look at Marco over here moving numbers. Speaking yeah. of moving numbers, VR, who is your best bet for this week? Yeah. Ultimately, one of the worst teams in all of college football faded them last week, and it cost me. Um, and I'm going to back them this week, and that's Connecticut. I released them to my subscribers on the money line, minus 160, minus 165. I was comfortable betting it all the way up to minus 200. I was expecting this line to go through three. It did that. It's now three and a half at most of the sharp shops. I still think the value's on the money line. Again, you could grade it how you want. To me, that's irrelevant how you grade it. I care about cashing tickets and being profitable year over year for my subscribers. That's how I released it to them. So if you follow or fade, bet it how you choose. And here's why. Um, because it's the kind of team that'll be overlooked when they're outperforming the betting market. Hear me out. Usually I look for those teams that I expect to regress and progress towards the mean. We toss out those outliers where we talked about it before. You're never as good or as bad as you look. Um, and then you take all the rest of the metrics and you expect teams to progress and regress towards the mean. Now, with a team like Connecticut, the reason they're not regressing, they continue to outperform the betting market, is because it's not costing the books any money. The market's not going to correct quickly with a team like Connecticut. As efficient as college football betting market may be, it's not so efficient that it's going to correctly correct itself with a team like Connecticut, which again, isn't going to attract any type of volume. If anything, it's getting bet against. So them covering numbers is beneficial to the sports books. In fact, last week, Bandy was my best bet. It was one of the bets that got steamed by three, four different groups. Um, so there's no reason for the market to correct itself. Again, markets are created by humans. They're set up to take the most amount of money from the most amount of people, the most amount of times. Um, and this is a perfect way of doing it. On the flip side, you look at UMass. They just keep underperforming against the betting market. Exactly what a shit team is expected to do. Now, fortunately for me, they're playing a Connecticut team. So you could continue fading them. If they were in a spot where they were playing a much better team, 
obviously you would be looking at a team underperforming like UMass to be getting more points than they should. That's not the case because it's an 0 and 5, 0 and 6, whatever UConn on the other side. That's where we get the value. Um, again, uh, it's a bad team. Fortunately for me, they're playing a worse team. Uh, so give me Connecticut. I hope they covered a three, three and a half, just in case people lay the number. Uh, but I got the on the money line is my best bet in my pocket. And this is proof that VR really doesn't watch the games. What a disaster of a matchup. And VR says, lay it with the Huskies. We're going to take our last commercial break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it all up and make you guys a nice little present with a beautiful bow on top for all of you to scroll to the end. I hate this part of the show. Sign up for the free WagerTalk text club to gain access to free plays and exclusive discounts. Just text WagerTalk to 33222 to sign up and get a $10 coupon to use on wagertalk.com. Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2. If you guys started to hear part of my rant before we went into the commercial, I was telling Marco and VR, I want to see you guys taking notes. There is so much great information that these guys give out every single game. And then you just get lazy and you scroll to the end. I want to ask the recap. Jump in the comments. Should I ask the recap? Should we keep the recap? Let me know. Uh, before we go, though, VR has uh, a little bit of gold for you guys. Oh, yeah. we. I got some gold to share. And you're going to have to watch the NFL, too. We got some good things over there. Uh, here's where I'm going to take you. I don't know if this will be out in time for tonight's baseball, but I'll share it real quickly because gold is when I jumped on it myself. If I get to the window and bet it myself or release the subscribers, other than that, I'll share it and use it how you like. Uh, these I'm on. Adam Wainwright, under four and a half, minus 145 strikeouts. Max Scherzer, under seven and a half, minus 115 strikeouts. So we're betting both pitchers under and strikeout props tonight. Also, we bet Milwaukee to win that series at minus 140. And finally, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to give you the golf matchup that just came out. Not even subscribers got these yet, so use them as you wish. Golf, 7465, Bland, minus 170. 7022, Zalatoris, even money. 7044, Tringali. That's T R I N G A L E minus 150. 7469 Armas, A R M A U S plus 140. 7144 Fowler plus 140. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for the golf. So yeah, I gave you golf. I don't really give that stuff out a lot. They like to keep that stuff under the lid. But uh, there you go. You Hopefully it's another winning week. And that they do well with those smaller markets. So there you go. I you love to see fade, it. Let's cash. see if, if we can't get some of these golf matchups in here in between the college football and NFL show. But really quickly, we're going to wrap this one up. If I get the producer to throw up the recap for us. That's right. Everybody likes Penn State. We've got some barking dogs, West Virginia and Boise State, both of which I already bet, including the sandwich game of LSU plus three. VR says the steam game is Colorado State. Do not wait. Bet it now at two and a half. If it gets to three, it is a no play. My best bet is the ugly dog from Champaign, Illinois. And that is getting 10 points against the Wisconsin Badgers. VR said UConn money line and UConn minus three, depending on your money line number. And Marco gave out his best bet early this week on the Wager Talk Twitter, and that is Virginia Tech plus one. It is currently a pick 'em. So get over there before you guys miss out on any more of these numbers. And as always, don't forget, check out our NFL Bet On It show. As VR likes to say, smash that like button. Jump in the comments. Tell us what you think. Should we keep the recap? Should we not? Until next week, we'll see you guys then. Don't forget, let's bet on it.